Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q4 of the bi weekly contest 74 minimum white tiles after covering with carpets. So, this one is definitely tricky. If you haven't done it, or if you haven't seen similar problems before, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord so we can all cover with carpets together. Hmm, that sounds like some kind of dubious thing we're up to. Anyway, but anyway, uh, yeah, so for this problem, the first thing that I did is to look at constraints, to be honest. Uh, I saw that n is equal to a thousand, so I can maybe do something n square. Though in Python, that's a little bit trickier than, you know, they state. But that's the way that I thought about it. Um, and then I think, for me, I actually did this kind of relatively quickly, about three minutes. Uh, actually, hmm, wasn't even the longest uh, problem I did. But, uh, but... But that said, this is uh, just from a lot of experience because this is very similar to problems that you might have seen before but might not have, um, you know, uh, 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 just done, right? And basically the idea is dynamic programming. Um, and with dynamic programming, you have to kind of figure out the states and the states for this problem is just figuring out that, um, that you have uh, sub fours, if you will, with either fewer carpets, and so, and that's the way that I would think about it. Um, and what I mean by that is that, for example, if you have, if you have a four of size n, then any uh, a small suffix of that would be a a a, a, a possible solution, right? Um, so that's basically the idea. And then you have this carpet and then you have this co covering, right? The way that I think about this is, um, and we'll go over the code in a sec, don't, don't you worry. But the way, the way that I think about this is that, um, you know, so you have all these ones and zeros and you're trying to minimize the number of ones, right? In this uh, particular end result. And then the idea of having a carpet is that now you don't have to count the, the ones that are inside. So then now we could skip to the suffix. So that's basically the idea behind this particular uh, dynamic programming solution is that you know you, you try putting a carpet here. If you put a carpet here, what does that mean, right? If you put a carpet here, that means that you, ha you have a four of the, the rest of it. Um, otherwise, if you don't, what happened? Well, if you don't, then you have yeah, so you have two cases, right? Let's say. So one case is that you put a carpet down and then now you have, you know, this is what your four looks like. The other case is that now you count the one. The other case is that now you increment the one as part of the, the score, if you will, because the now the white tower is available and you look at the suffix um, of the four. So that's basically the two scenarios that you can look at. And that's pretty much all you need to solve this problem. Um, because now, you know, you're always looking at the suffix, that's one, and you only have two choices, right? You only can put it, put one down or you don't put it down. And of course you have number of carpets, which increase the number of states because now you have to keep track of how many carpets you use, but that's, that's something that's done with practice and you could figure it out. Um, once you've, especially if you have done enough dynamic programming problems before, um, you know. Uh, one additional thing that you may get a little bit uh, hung up on, uh, and I kind of did a little bit, is something like this, right? Where, okay, you could have overlaps here. How do you model overlaps in this situation? And the answer that I would say is just, um, in that case, you can also redraw this in a way to something like this, right? And in this case, um, because you, you know, in a greedy kind of way, uh, this overlap does no good for anyone anyway. So, so then you can imagine just visualizing it as this while you stick out to some, I don't know, some additional empty, not as non-existing four, and that's basically the um, the trick, you, if you will, to kind of um, notice to to solve this problem without any additional weirdness because. Um, because effectively, you just get chopped off. Um, you could also write it another way. For example, you could just say, oh, if there's an overlap, uh, or if, if if you putting down a carpet creates thing to the end, you just chop it off, and now you have a carpet length of two instead, or something like that, right? 
Um, either way would be fine. Uh, though, depending on how you write your cash, maybe it's a little bit awkward. Um, now that I think about it, but but that's fine too because it's it's generally cheap. So this is basically my code, and this is basically what we're talking about. Right? Uh, I'm not going over how to use cash. I know that a lot of people, especially uh, more beginner people, uh, just put cash in, on top of everything and hope it works. Sure, maybe that works, but I urge, urge, urge you to really understand how it works because that's not going to help you on an interview. It's not going to help you on higher level com or more difficult competitive stuff. So yeah. So how I would analyze this, of course, is just saying that, okay, index can go from zero to, uh, I guess, technically uh, zero to N ish. Uh, you can you can actually chop this off by over n, but but uh, because like we said, um, you know this can be greater than n, but we can also have add an if statement here somewhere to make that n. So let's just say this is zero to n or all of n number of items that index can be. But what is left? Left is also zero uh, to carpet length, so zero to c maybe. Uh, so O of C, right? So that means that the number of possible inputs is O of N times C. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, and C is, of course, the number of carpets. Eh, maybe I didn't make that clear. Um, like I said, we can chop off if it goes over over the limit, then we have zero because that means this is our base case, but also means that there's no four left, so no white tiles left, <clears throat> right? And otherwise, we said best is equal to n. If, uh, if 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 we have any carpet left, then we do this thing, right? We we basically skip ahead to the suffix, um, and then we used one carpet. Uh, if this best is, you know, if this is now a better answer, we set that to the answer. Otherwise, uh, we just see if the current four is one. Um, that's based, I mean, if it's right, then you have, you have to add that to the cost because now we're moving one to the right and then we're never going back, right? So we're only adding one to the, to the right column or right uh, tiles. Uh, and then we just, you know, this is skipping, basically. This is, okay. Uh, use a carpet here. Um, skip a carpet, uh, skip uh, a space and add one if it's right, right? And of course, if it's best, then you return it. And that's pretty much it. So then now you just have to get the zero index to kick off, which means the entire carpet, which makes, or the entire four. And this is the number of carpets that they give you. So that's pretty much it. Um, and here, if you look at all these operations, we only do O of one operations. There's no for loop, no nothing. So, so each input takes O of one time, which means that, you know, possible inputs times each input time is equal to O of N times C for total uh, total time. And of course, each input also takes O of one space because of the caching. Um, so yeah, this is O of N times C space. Um, and of course, because N is a thousand, C is a thousand, uh, or up to a thousand. Um, hmm, this is a... Oh, no, no. Whoops, I, I double clicked on the wrong one. So highlighted the wrong one. Uh, so yeah, so carpets is a thousand. So this is going to be up to a thousand square or a million possible inputs. Uh, but yeah, uh, this, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is, a, if you haven't done that enough dynamic program problems, this can be tricky for sure, especially some kind of uh, jumping ahead that I did here. But so definitely I urge that you practice your dynamic programming. Dynamic programming problems are just hard in general, especially if you're starting out. There's just so many different variations and, and it's almost like um, you have to do one more problem solving on top of dynamic programming. So it's very hard. Uh, so definitely um, practice, practice, practice. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for the explanation. You could watch me solve it live during the contest now. Hope I don't have floating point issues.
this is going to be fast enough because this is Python. Should be okay. Should be only a thousand caches. <coughs> um, hmm. No, that part's okay. And that will overlap anyway. Yeah, the time's hard for a little bit sad. Okay. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem, the explanation, and this contest in general. Uh, especially come on Discord because there are a lot of smart people there, a lot of uh, top 25 people, including me. So, yeah. Anyway, um, stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.